Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode we started working on the weapon script and now we have some basic shooting. We can shoot at these targets and we can see the bullet fly off and we get the name of each target. But this is some very basic shooting and we want to make it look better and feel better. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. First let's change the targets a bit. We're going to remove these ones, we're going to take this red one out of the wall and we're going to make the wall lower. Then we're going to change the size of this target and place it on the wall. Now we want to simulate some kind of metal plate or maybe a brick. Now we're going to add a rigid body to it because we're going to use physics on it and we're going to increase the mass because we really want this to be a solid object that we can shoot at and if it's going to be with one mass then it's just going to fly off but we want it to just fall on the ground that's why we need it with a higher mass. Then we're going to rename it and duplicate it a few more times. Another thing that we want to do is go into the dummy weapon and increase the bullet velocity to about 100 because with 30 bullet velocity these plates are not going to move so we want our bullet to be faster but because it's faster it's also stronger so when it will hit these plates they will actually move and now we can check this out so you can see that I'm shooting at these plates and they fall off to the ground and that's nice. Next we're going to do a small change inside the bullet script we want to also consider when we're shooting at the wall, we don't want the bullet to just bounce off the wall, so we're going to destroy the bullet also when it hits a wall. And of course we also want to create the wall tag that we don't have and place it on the wall. Now that these preparations are done, we're going to go back into our weapon script and add more things to it. So this is the script up until now, and let's add a few more properties. So we're going to have a reference to the player camera, we're going to have a boolean that checks if we're actually shooting and if we're ready to shoot, we're going to have a boolean that will help us reset the shot only once, and we're going to have a float with the shooting delay. Then we also have a few properties for the burst mode, so we're going to have bullets per burst, we're going to have the current burst, and we also want some kind of spread intensity because some weapons will not be very accurate so we want to be able to add this spread. Now this is the bullet properties and we also want to add an enum that will be the shooting mode. So our weapons will have different modes, we have a single mode, a burst mode and an automatic mode. So we're simply going to set a different mode for a different weapon. And we also want to have our current shooting mode, which is of type shooting mode. So now that we have this, we're also going to create an awake method. We're going to set the ready to shoot to true because in the beginning we are going to be ready to shoot. And we're also going to set the current burst to the bullets per burst. Now inside the update method, we're going to do a few more changes because we want to consider the different shooting modes. So if the current shooting mode is the automatic, then its shooting will only be true when we are holding the key, the left mouse button. But if the current shooting mode is single or burst, then we want to be able to shoot only when we click it once, not hold it. So that's the difference between get key and get key down. Get key down is when we click it once and get key is when we actually hold the button. Now we want to check if we're actually ready to shoot and if we're shooting then we're going to set the current burst to be the bullets per burst and this will happen each time we start to shoot so it's not a duplicate from what we have inside the awake and we're also going to fire the weapon. So now we check the different shooting modes and we're going to shoot if we shoot accordingly if we hold the button or if we just click once. Now inside the fire weapon we're going to add a few more things. First of all when we start shooting we're going to set the ready to shoot to false because we don't want to be able to shoot twice when the first shot is not yet finished. 
then we're going to create a shooting direction vector and we're going to have a method that will calculate the actual direction and the spread. So let's create this method over here and it's going to be normalized. Then we're going to instantiate the bullet and after we instantiate the bullet, we want to turn the bullet forward axis to point at the shooting direction. Then we're going to shoot the bullet and we're going to destroy it after a while. And now we want to be able to reset the shot. So if allow reset is true and in the beginning it will be true, then we're simply going to invoke the reset shot method after the shooting delay. And we're going to set the allow reset to be false. And then if we want to be able to shoot in burst mode, then we're simply going to check if we're in burst mode and then if we have more than one bullets left. So if we have more than one bullet left, it means that we're still in the middle of the burst. So we're going to decrease the current burst and we're going to invoke the fire weapon method again because we want to keep shooting. Now I want to change the name of this current burst to burst bullets left because it's a bit confusing. So the burst bullets left is how many bullets we have left in this specific burst. So if our burst is three bullets, then we are going to shoot three times. And we're checking if it's bigger than one because we already shoot once when we get to this point. That's why we don't check if it's more than zero. Now we're going to create this reset shot. And when we reset the shot, we're going to set the ready to shoot to true again and the allow reset to be true again. Now, if you don't understand exactly why we need this ready to shoot and allow reset, basically we just don't want to reset the shot multiple times. We want to be able to reset the shot only once because this invoke reset shot will happen after the shooting delay. So if the shooting delay is three seconds or four seconds, we don't want to be able to reset the shot while this delay is still waiting. So it's some kind of lock to allow us to run this method only once. Now we're going to add code to this calculate direction and spread method. So we're going to have a ray that will come out from the middle of our screen. And when this ray will hit something, we're going to know the position the bullet should go to. So if we hit some target, then we're going to save it inside this target point. But if we just shoot to the air or to the sky and we don't hit anything, then we just want to get the point where the bullet should fly off to. Then we're going to create the direction vector that is simply a calculation of the target point minus the bullet spawn position because the bullet spawn position is on the tip of our weapon and the target point is somewhere in the distance or on the target that we have on the wall. And this is the direction. Next, we want to create our spread. So we're simply going to provide it with the spread intensity and it's going to find some kind of random number and it's going to put it inside this float X and float Y. So the spread can go on the x-axis or on the y-axis. And after we have everything, we're going to return the direction and this new spread. So the y and the x. And this is exactly what this method does. It calculates the direction and the spread. If we're going to set the spread intensity to zero, then we're not going to have any kind of spread and we're going to hit the exact position we're pointing at. But that's not realistic because in real life, you always have some kind of spread. And then when this calculate direction and spread method is going to return a vector, it's going to keep it inside the shooting direction. And we're going to use this inside this fire weapon method. So you may be wondering, why do we need this if we already can shoot a bullet? Right now we can shoot a bullet and it will simply come out physically from the middle of this weapon but it's not accurate and we do want to be able to do more advanced things. That's why we're using this ray to know exactly the point where the bullet should fly to. And this way we can also add some spread and we can do other more advanced things. That's why we're simply going to point at a point and the bullet is going to fly to this point. And this point is always going to be the middle of our screen. Now over here inside the weapon script, we can see all the different settings. And here we basically change everything 
for the different weapons. So each weapon will have a different setting. For example, if we will have an assault rifle, then we're going to set it to shooting mode automatic. We're going to change the shooting delay. We're going to change the settings. If we're going to have a pistol, we're going to set it to single. So this is where we change the different weapons and each weapon will have this script on it. Now let's run the game. So now we're in single shooting mode. So I click once and it will shoot one bullet. And you can also see that the ready to shoot will wait two seconds before it will allow me to shoot again. So you can change this shooting delay value, but right now we have to wait two seconds between each shot. If I'm going to change it to automatic, then I simply hold the left mouse button and it will still have this delay between the shots. So we basically want to make the delay very small when we use this automatic shooting mode. And with the burst, I'm clicking once and it's going to shoot three bullets. And again, it's going to wait two seconds between each bullet. So there's some fine tuning involved in these settings, but we need to know exactly which weapon we want so we can actually change these settings according to the weapon. And later we're going to have specific weapons that will have specific settings. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we're going to add some effects to the scene. So we're going to feel like we're actually shooting at something. And little by little, we're going to add more and more things to this game. And it's going to feel much better and much more satisfying. Please leave a like, please subscribe and see you next time.